So GarageBand is cool. You can play almost any instruments using your physical keyboard, or if you are you are lucky to have your own MIDI keyboard, you can plug it in via USB as well. But what if you are not a musician? Like me, I am not a musician. So what can I do? Well, the cool thing about GarageBand is that even if I'm not an instrument, I'm not, I'm not the player of an instrument, I don't know how to play an instrument, I don't need to use the keyboard that you can see over here to play. Instead, I'm going to hide my library of instruments and I'm going to show something we call Apple Loops. Apple Loops is on your upper right corner of the GarageBand window. Clicking on it brings up a list of loops with different categories. All these categories represent loops of music that has been recorded by Apple. So if you want to create your own music, you don't really need to play. All you need to do is just drag a particular loop and drop it into the project. That's why it says drag Apple loops here. So why not we do a simple demonstration? For the loops here, I'm showing all of it. As a troubleshooting step, if you find that you don't see any loops, do a re-index of all loops because there are hundreds or thousands of loops on your computer depending on whether you've actually downloaded your entire sound library or just only the essential sounds. So make sure you download all your sound library or reinstall it if necessary. So I'm going to add an instrument. Let me click on shakers. There's lots of shakers that you see over here. I'll start with simple shaker number one. That sounds pretty cool. I'll drag it and I'll drop it inside my project. So now I have my first instrument that's over here. If I play it, you'll play only this particular section of the loop, as you can see. However, it's too short. So GarageBand allows you to repeat it. When you move your mouse over the loop that you place inside the GarageBand project, the mouse behaves in two different ways. If your mouse is above the upper portion of this particular loop, you see the icon change to a, a line with a circular arrow. This allows you to loop it on continuously. Now, if your mouse is below, this is to trim it, change the length. So in this case, we're going to try to repeat it. So let me just repeat this particular loop, the shaker, a bit longer. Now I have my first instrument, a shaker. Let's add more. Let me change and go back to my loops category. Let me add, say, some conga drums. So again, when I click on conga, I have a few selections. Let's choose one. This sounds good. Let me just drag that into the project. There'll be another track. Same thing. I'm going to repeat that. Okay. So now I have two loops. I think I need more. Let me see if I can add a tambourine. Let's see. Sounds good. Let me just drag that tambourine. Again, it's another track, another loop. And I'm going to be repeating that as well. I'm going to adjust the conga groove as well. I don't want it to be played together. So I'll just drag it maybe a bit later in the video so that I can use it shortly. So now I have three instruments and I've actually repeated it. Let me add something else, some violin strings. So again, I have a lot. You can always search using the search area. So I'm going to find some orchestra starting with an O. Found it. Let's see. Okay, this sounds quite dramatic. I'll drag that and drop it somewhere around here. Okay, cool. I think that's where my music is ready. Let's play it. So as you can see, you can actually create cool music just by using repetitive loops. So once you're done, you can always click on share and send it as a, either a ringtone or even as a song. 
into iTunes. You can even burn it to a CD if you have a CD drive or export it as MP3 to a disc. So GarageBand allows you to do and be creative on your music, on your Mac, for free using GarageBand. So try it out and have fun.